Today, we're gonna be lowering the Savoy, getting rid of that horrible, horrible wheel gap. Probably drop it down, I would say, two to three inches, if not more. We're not gonna slam it to the ground just yet, but definitely get rid of almost all the wheel gap, make it look so much better. And then later on today, Steve's gonna come by with his scanner, we're gonna hook up to the car, and see if we can't pull something, because we're missing something here. I've tried everything I can think of, and we're still having the same issue where the car just randomly dies out of nowhere, no indication, nothing's bogging, no lights dimming, no stuttering, just off like that. So we're gonna check and see if the ECU might be bad. I don't know. I left the car completely unplugged overnight uh, to try and like hard reset the ECU. I'm gonna plug it up here in a second and maybe it's better, I, I doubt it. Even the very first day I went and got the car from the junkyard, um, it ran fine, I don't find it didn't die out at all, but sometimes when I would rev the car, it would have a little bit of like a, a hiccup and it would kind of like bog down for a second, um, but it wasn't anything major. It's obviously gotten much worse since then, but even the very first day before I touched anything on the car, it still had a slight issue. So maybe all the leaves and dirt that was up by the ECU, got moisture in it or something like that, I don't quite know. We're gonna scan the car, hopefully find something, but whether the car runs better or not, either way, we're still gonna lower it. So as you can see, the car has been uh, disconnected for about almost 12 hours at this point. It was about six o'clock yesterday. It's 3 p.m. today. Um, hopefully that kind of has killed all the juice out of the car. The car's idling smooth, still uh, bogs like garbage. Oh well, I don't care about that. We're lowering the car today. I can care less how it runs right now. It's annoying. So Mark 3s are fairly simple to put coilovers or bags on compared to like a Mark 4. No stretch spreader needed. There's one uh, nut on top and then a bolt 2 on the bottom. So three in total on the front, one there, two on the bottom. And then in the rear you have the one uh, top nut up here and then one down there. And it's off. Very, very easy to do for the most part if there's not like rusted and stuff. Um, in the back though I do recommend don't jack up the car. Um, by the rear beam because you want it to hang down so you have room to drop it out of the way um, But overall it's a very very easy job to do um, This up here normally is a I think a 17 or 18 um, It kind of varies per car, but I'm glad that Mike dropped off that impact gun because a lot of times That nut is a pain to get to spin without the whole strut spinning So we'll start in the front work our way to the back. This should be a fairly easy job. Hopefully there's no hidden surprises. Um, I didn't really see any rust on the car, so this should be a very easy, easy job. In the back we have the goodies. Bam! Time to get low. For now, I'm gonna leave the coilovers um, at the exact setting they're at right now, just to see where the car's at. We can adjust it later. I said I don't want it too, too low for right now, um, but probably bring it down to like just above the wheel. I think it'd be good for now. Get a good look. This is the last time she shall be a monster truck. Front of the car is up, got our jack stands in. I'm gonna do the two fronts first, uh, starting up here. This is actually a 22 millimeter, I was wrong. So 22 up here, and I believe the two down there are 18s, if I'm not wrong, or it's not different. Um, but 22, uh, 18, swap it out, put the new ones in. Very, very straightforward, should be pretty easy to do. I'm really excited to finally test out my impact gun. This is gonna come in so handy. See how she does. Down is tight and top is reverse, okay. Oh yeah. So much nicer. Oh, give us like a back. So much nicer. I love power tools. That's just that's just nice stuff. So in here we have the top bolt here. There's also a bottom bolt right there. Um, I'm gonna have to remove whatever this little bracket thing is because it's on top of that bottom bolt that goes through. Uh, it's pretty, pretty easy. Normally what I do is I put a wrench on one side and use my mount to kind of tap it until it spins. Uh, usually the best way to do that. So once that's out of the way, we'll go ahead and get this one out of the way and this strut should be out of here. So in here, um, these two bolts are both 18 millimeter. That is the correct size. I'm gonna try and use the impact first because it actually will fit in there. Um, sometimes you need more power than that. So I'll use a wrench on it and hit with the mallet. So we'll see how tight they are on here. They may have never been off before, so we'll see. Yeah, they're usually on there pretty good. So, wrench, hold it, and then, there she goes. Both top and bottom bolts are now out. This one was a bit of a pain. Lots of hammer smacking, but we finally got it. This one was a lot easier. Now all we gotta do is go through here real quick, uh, pop off these brake lines from the strut, but you can see the whole bottom strut here is already 
out. So pop these two lines off, undo our top one, and out. All right, one last nut to go. I put one bolt in back down here to hold the strut from spinning when I'm hitting this top one, and it should work. Bam! Impact gun for the win. All right, pull our bottom bolt here out. All right, bolt out, off the spindle, and bam! One down. Out with the old, in with the new. What's nice about these coil levers, they have the little bracket piece here as well as like the factory ones do. That way I can still mount the uh, little brake line holder to this one and it's not just swinging around, so that's nice. And you already see there, even at the bottom, how much shorter this one already is. And I haven't touched this at all yet, I'm gonna leave it just how it is. Put in the car, see the height, we can adjust it later on, but it's already gonna drop a good little bit. So when putting the strut back in, I usually like to do the bottom first and then use the second jack to lift the strut back up to the tower. Um, if you have a second person, that can help you as well. But since I'm by myself, it's a bit easier this way. So we'll put the bottom one in first, get the bolts in, and then we'll lift it up to the top. All right, both our bolts are through. Now before I go tightening this down, we're gonna use our jack on the bottom here, lift it up, and get our top hat in. Dang, that's already so much more travel than the last time. All right, once that's through, grab your top hat and your nut, and you are just about down your first side. So just doing like a visual comparison, look how much higher this, uh, the center right there is. So it's about, well, let's say the top of the side skirt, I would say. If you go to this side that I haven't touched yet, you can see this one is way down here, pretty much at the bottom of the side skirt. So we went up about, I would say, inch and a half, maybe two inches or so, give or take. And I hadn't even adjusted that side yet. So like I said, I'm gonna put the car down first before adjusting the spindle at all, just to see how it sits, but we might go down just a bit lower just to see. I want it pretty much how the R32 sits, just right above the tire. It's kind of how I want this one to sit for now until we get wheels, so that's what we're going for. Driver's side, all done and buttoned up. We got our little brackets back on, our brake lines are all tucked away, everything's good to go. About to put the front wheels on and lower it down and see how she sits. All right, we got our jack stands out. You already see the wheel is way, way higher up than it was before. Gonna lower it down and see if that's gonna be enough. Let's see. All right, here we go. Let's see. Eh. I mean, it's definitely a lot better than before, but we're gonna need more than that. So as you can see here, we're at about, let's see. About, I would say three fingers or so. And back here, we're at about five. So we went down about two fingers, so it's definitely better. But it's not gonna be enough. Okay, let's fix that. All right, so from where the perches were, I brought them down about halfway. Um, we still have about halfway to go for it to actually hit the bottom. Now these are not like two piece, they don't have any preload, so I can just spin the perches down and there's no issue. But I would call this our, our half send, because we went from there halfway down and we have about another, I would say, inch and a half to go before it's like all at the very, very bottom. And also, if I ever need to, I can pull the helper spring out too to get more low, but I think this should get to me where I want to be. All right, take number two. Let's see how it goes. Down, down, down. How are we now? Oh, well, it's looking better, it's looking better. Getting closer. I kinda still want it farther than that though. We can see the obvious difference from the front and the back now. Now we're down to about, um, I can't, I can't fit two, but I mean, it's tucking the tire a little tiny bit, uh, but still, mm, I don't know. Should go a little bit more. Hmm. Yeah, a little bit more. Another look at the full car from this side. I mean, obviously it's a, it's a lot lower in the front, but not quite enough, and I know someone's like, just spin it all the way down, but I don't want, there's still fender line on the car, the fender um, aren't rolled at all, so I don't want it to be annoyingly, annoying to drive, and I still have to get this car inspected if it ever runs right, but 
We're not going to go all the way to the ground. Once I have wheels, I'll fit it to the wheels nicely. But as for right now, I just want a nice, a nice slow. I don't want it to rub the fender liner. I don't want it to hit the fenders. I want it as like practical. You guys know me. I like, personally, I like air better. If you're a static warrior, props to you. It's just not my style. But I do like a nice low car. So I think we'll go down just a little bit more in the front. Give her that last little bit of gap. And then we'll go to the backs. All right. Third time is the charm. I think this is going to be a good one. All right. Get you all set up. Here we go. This should be the last one. It shouldn't need any more than this. Oh, the lip's crushing my jack. Hang on. I pull up off. You know you're getting somewhere when the lip's getting crushed. Hold on. Give it. All right, we'll put you back on in a second. All right, down you go. Yeah, there we go. That's looking good. That's a nice height. I like that. Obviously, compared to the back, way, way down. The tire's tucking in there just a little bit. I think that's a pretty good little height. I like that. That looks really, really good. And at that height, I should be able to turn full lock left and right and not hit anything. Uh, I shouldn't catch the fenders or the fender liner. We should be good to go. Nice. Time to get the rears in. I think with these ones, I'm just going to measure the same I did on the front and then see if it matches. If not, we'll go up or down to try and uh, match the front. Um, but these are the rears. The rears are very simple. One bolt on the bottom, one at the top. Very, very straightforward. The one on the bottom is inside the rear beam. And the one on the top, you guys have seen before, it's right up here on top of the strut. Uh-oh. I heard it. Where's it at? There it is. I hear this car all the way down the block. I can hear you all the way down the block. <laughs> so he's here with his OBD reader. Let's see if we can't figure out if we're missing any codes on this thing. And then hopefully we find some progress today. So looking at this here, we have one fault for the engine and it's a sensor and it just says 00515, right? Is that what it was? Um, yeah, 00515. So I'm gonna try and look that up and see what that is. And then also on the paperwork out from the junk car, there's a note that says the car stalls. So before I even had the car, this was already an issue. So probably why it ended up there, but we're gonna try to figure it out. So I'm gonna Google that and see if we can find out what that sensor is. And then maybe that's our, our whole issue. But something I might try and do, I do have the previous owner's information here that he's the one who brought the car to the junkyard. Um, and it does say that one note, it just says stalls. It doesn't really say anything else. That it just says stalls. So I have his number here. So I may try and give him a call and to see what he tried or if he got to do a mechanic and had it, then say it's this or it's that. So maybe that might help out a little bit talk to Mr. Uh, Mr. Thomas here and figure out what happened with this car because I am sick of it. So good. Got to move the R out of the way real quick so Steve can get out of here. Oh. All the VR cars here today. All right, well I looked online for the fault code that it showed. Um, one showed on like a G40. Uh, the cam sensor was a fault on like that side and there's also one that some people said there's a some relays that send current signal to the ECU that could be the fault um, and a couple other things it's hard to pinpoint exactly what it is there's a few guys having the same issue that I was um, but different things fix their issue uh, that I've already tried that haven't done anything for me so I don't know it's weird but I don't care to fix it right now we're gonna lower the back of this car first side is out a little comparison here you can see how much shorter the new coilover is versus the OEM stuff Put that one in, put this side on the ground, swap to that side, and we're just about there. This car's gonna look so good once it's all the way low. And then for those of you wondering how to lower the rear, there's a 17 millimeter bolt and nut that goes through uh, that side there into the side of the tube. So you can see the nut there and the bolt over there. And then inside of the car, I've laid it all out, but it's all right here, all 17s. You have this little like washer thing or like bearing, this top hat, a nut, and then another nut. Very, very easy and straightforward to do. And then I like to either jack up or 
jack stand right here on the brace, not actually on the rear beam, on the brace, because you want to have this able to still move, because you're, you're gonna need to stand on this a little bit to push it down to pull out the longer rear strut. These ones should go in without any problem because they're shorter, but the original ones, you gotta kind of push it down a little bit and you wanna have that freedom to let the rear beam actually move. All right, driver's side rear is on. I'm gonna see how it sits. This one's spun all the way down, so we may have to go up, but we'll see. There's still the helper spring too. Oh. Oh, it's tucking. Oh my god. Dang. It can go lower, but I'm crushing my, my jack here, I think. Hang on. Ooh, I like that. Dang. Dang. It's tucking pretty good. I like that. That looks pretty good. I think. And it sits pretty even, though. Look at that. From the front to the rear. I think that's good. The back might be a tiny bit lower, but the car looks like it's pretty level though. Dang. That looks so good. So much better than before. Like I said, the rears are spun all the way down and the fronts have about a uh, half inch or so to go down still, but the car sits really, really level and really nice. I like that a lot. So, one more side to do. Man, if only this car would have run as good as it looks. That would be, be fantastic. All right, the car is officially on the ground. The back sits pretty low. It's tucking pretty hard. Um, I might actually have to raise the back up a little bit. We'll see. It doesn't match the front, but I'm going to pull it into the barn just and see it. Let's get a look. <laughs> the back's tucking pretty hard. It's still at a good ride height, but it sits pretty low. The rears are spun all the way down. The front's a little bit more to go. But it looks pretty good. And what's crazy is like that the front can still go down a little bit, but the car sits really, really even. Even though the rear looks a little bit lower, uh, the car sits really even. I like it, it looks good. It looks really good. Not bad. There's our front height, and then I'll show you the rear height. Hang on. You're on this side over here. Oh, we got right, right, right. There it is. And there's our rear height. So, like I said, nothing crazy, but very, very nice, drivable. I can turn all the way right, left. Nothing rubs. It's nice. I like it. I like it. Not bad. Not bad at all. So when I was talking to Steve earlier today, obviously we found the fault code in the car, blah, 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 whatever. I did a little bit of research on it. Couldn't really find anything like exact. There's like a bunch of different answers. So honestly right now, I don't really care. But aside from that, when I was talking to Steve today, he said when his Corvette got shipped in and he saw the car there, he just went and said, hey, my car is here, I'm here to pick it up. And they let him get it that same day. So I probably would've got Miley today if I would've known that, but I didn't. So it's closed um, Saturday, Sunday. So Monday, we should be able to get Miley. So a few more days, we probably could've had it today, but I didn't know I could just go there and say, hey, I need my car and they'll give it to you. But hopefully Monday we can go there, be like, yo, my car is here, I need it. If it's not already processed by then, um, we don't know. But very, 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 very soon, Miley is gonna be here. So I, I go there, I get the car, I go right next door and get temporary plates. I think they inspect it right then and there, which I'm sure my car's gonna fail because, not that it's loud or this and that, I have no washer nozzles on my hood. They've been shaved, it's gone. The pump's gone, the reservoir, all the lines, everything is gone, and they check for that when they inspect the car. So I'm pretty sure I'm gonna fail because of that. Maybe they'll be nice to let me go if I explain what's going on, but, I don't know. Other than that, we're still going to have Miley on Monday. Fingers crossed. And I can drive the car for 30 days before my temporary tie expires, blah, blah, blah. But just a few more days. Just a few more days. If you're hyped on Miley, thumbs up. If you're excited for this car below, 
Also, thumbs up if you're new. Consider subscribing. Don't forget, be thankful for every single day. We'll see you guys next time. Peace.